Hello, welcome back. Today it is Game Master preparation. It's a work day. This is where we actually have to do some work, make some stuff, have a bit of fun. And uh, of course I'll be doing a presentation before you is Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition Dungeon Master Guide, the Game Master's Book of Random Encounters, and Pathfinder's Game Mastery Guide. And this is the 1st Ed Edition one, not the 2nd Ed Edition one. So my suggestion to you is uh, grab some food, some drink, get comfortable, get ready. I'm going to do my presentation. Once I've done my presentation, uh, we're going to go into uh, the process of actually building a world in this, the time we have. We'll do it. We'll complete it in the time we have. We always usually do. I have a poll here. Feel free to take part in that poll. And uh, yeah, should be a fun time. Now I'm going to do my normal presentation and then that'll give people time to jump into the chat uh, into the live stream, and then we'll we'll roll into the actual um, creation of uh, a world. So, I think that pretty much covers everything. We should be able to start jumping over and getting on with the uh, the task of <coughs> talking about world building. That's right, world building. Is it something that you do? Is it something you want to do? Okay. Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about role playing games. This is Game Mastery Preparation. This is intended to be Lesson 8, World Building. That's right, Building a World. I'm not kidding, we're going to go over Building a World. Now the overview for today, the things that we will be covering are the following. The sources of world building, mapping your world, naming the world or continents, uh, your world creation story or stories, there might be more than one, uh, choosing your gods and goddesses, developing your world locations and your world governments, determining the, the world's magic, technology, creating species, creating monster populations, and some miscellaneous recommendations like I always do. My objectives for today are very simple. I want to explain how to build and create your own world for a role-playing game, whether you play Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, or anything else, it doesn't matter. I want to demonstrate how to actually build a world for your role-playing game. So we're going to do this. That means you're going to get some practice. You're going to practice with me. So be ready for that. We've got a lot ahead of us. But before that, let's do a little review of some of the things we need to know. First thing is sources of world-building. I would suggest building a world from personal experience. Whatever your personal experience is, you've got lots of experience you can draw from, use that. Modifying your history, any kind of real world history, modifying that is very useful. Using or modifying uh, existing fantasy or science fiction worlds, again, very useful. You can steal from pop culture, such as Middle Earth, the, the Land of Oz, Narnia, or whatever else. Um, use player input. It's very easy to actually take whatever the players have created in a backstory for their character and port it into your game. It's, it's actually going to do a lot of the work for you. And I'll explain more about this as we go. You'll see, soon see that actually you don't have to do all the work. Some of the work can be done by somebody else. Mapping the world. Now mapping the world seems like a big job, but actually it's not a big job. Draw the world for your role playing game. It can be achieved a few different ways. You could simply grab one piece of paper, a blank piece of white paper, maybe A4 size, I normally do this myself, and just scribble a couple of wiggly lines. This is your continents or any little islands that might make up your world. Now you can use a pencil, you can use a pen, it really doesn't matter. Okay, that's your starting point. Now you can use software programs that will allow customization and a lot more detail and certainly they'll look a lot better than just your hand-drawn squiggly lines. But that's something you can do further down the line if you really want to. Uh, detailed landscape maps that are real. So using a real map for your world might actually be quite useful. Since the continents of Earth have changed and are altered over time, you can use any of those and then suddenly you just need to change some names and you've really, you've got your map. You've, it's already been done for you. A very easy cheat for those of you who are wondering. There's also a lot of random generators out there that allow you to actually just plug in a few... Um, details 
and you press a button and it spits out a world map for you, all done. And you've, uh, you've got to do no more, more work than that and it's taken you all of a few seconds. So world, uh, world map generator is also very, very useful. Naming the world might seem like a big job, but again, <clears throat> there's ways of getting around this. What is the name of your world? What are the names of your continents? Uh, do the worlds and continents need a name? Like, are we dealing with a, a world where your player characters may not even know what the name of the world is or the name of the continents? Is that actually going to be a factor that comes into your campaign or the adventures that you run in this world? You have been exposed to so many different types of um, world names and continent names from history and pop culture. I'm sure you can come up with something, drawing from your own experience again, as I was saying. Ask your players to name the world. Even if you have four or five players and everybody comes up with a different name, it means you get to pick and choose. You can actually have more than one name for your world. For example, um, Earth can be called many different things. Dirt, rock from the sun, dirt. I mean, there's a lot of different names. And if you look at different cultures, they don't all call it Earth. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... You can have more than one name for your world. You could name it, and your players can name it. And none of it would be wrong. It would just be related to a different culture or a different location within your world. That's what they call it there. The same world can have many names, as I said, across different civilizations. Also, there are many different world name generators that can work for you. You just plug in a few details, and it spits out a randomly generated name for your world, so you don't have to do that work at all. And you can do the same thing with your continents if you're worried about the continents. Now I said something about the world creation story. Now that seems a little odd. What are we doing with a world creation story? Why do we even have to do that? One, it's to try to make your world seem like it is part of something. And almost all worlds and all cultures have a world creation story. It's, it's kind of fundamental to the mythology and legend and the history of um, all cultures and the world, the world creation story. That's very, very important. So what is the world creation story for your world? No one really knows. No one is absolutely sure what the creation story is, but there's many theories out there. There's mythology, there's legends. Anyone can make up anything, not just the dungeon master or game master. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to present you with some of these standard creation stories that have been used across different cultures on earth and you can pick and choose and adjust it to fit what you want to do with your world or your players can do the same thing so here are your standard ones that you can choose from there are in fact others and you could do something completely different from this but these are the sort of standard formulas or templates that are that exist there that sort of spread across many different cultures <clears throat> The first one is the world is created by a supreme being. This is kind of like Christianity, where you have one supreme being creates the world. And in this case, Christianity, it's created in, um, I believe, is it six days? And on the seventh day, rest time. Okay, the world emerges over a long period of time as a metamorphosis. Is it kind of um, metamorphosis or changes into what it is now? Now, a good example of this might be something like um, Darwinism or evolution. Um, but you could have something else. It could be anything. You can also have two primal um, beings. This is like the mother, father, super beings. And they actually get together, mother, father, primal, super beings get together. And they birth the world from their, um, their joining. So there's another way of doing this. A lot of Pacific Island um, cultures have this sort of uh, approach. Next, you've got the world hatching from a cosmic egg laid by a deity. I know that sounds strange, so essentially look at it like chicken produces egg, egg becomes the world. And that's the easiest way to sort of um, pass it off. Now you can have anything hatching out an egg. It doesn't necessarily have to be a chicken <laughs> or a giant chicken or a chicken deity. Next one is the two companion gods. Now usually when you have two different companion gods, one represents good, the other one represents evil. And by diving in, whether it's the good um, god or the evil god or goddess, diving into the water source, and they pull the world into existence in some way. So it's taken from a water source and brought forth. And that's how the, uh, the world is, is birthed or created. <clears throat> Next, last one is 
um, gods or goddesses transform the corpse of a dead giant into the world. Now, it might even be a dead god where they take the parts of that dead god and form it into a world, and it just changes its um, existence in some way. Uh, I know you're thinking, well, hang on, do, how can gods, gods die? But, you know, depending on what, how you approach and think about gods and goddesses, it may well be something that um, you can incorporate into your game. So there are no real rules with regard to this. Remember, you're dealing with a fantasy world, so you can do what you like. Next, you've got to develop some gods and goddesses. You've got to develop some deities. Who are the deities in your world? I would again ask your players who they worship. Ask them what who, who, who are the deities in the world that your characters worship and use their ideas. If you don't like them, you don't have to include them. But if they come up with something that you do like, then didn't use it. They might come up with something that's completely new. Who knows? Um, you know actually tons of gods from history, mythology, and folklore that you can select. You can, ex you can select existing gods and goddesses and deities from different cultures throughout history, mythology, and folklore. Now, I know a lot of people um, frown on this. But it's none of their business because it's your game and your group at your home and it's actually not my business or theirs. So I'm not going to tell you that because those people can butt out, frankly. <laughs> okay, You do what you want to do. You're, you're not taking somebody else's um, gods and goddesses and trying to um, bastardize them. All you're doing is using them and putting them over into your, into your, um, your game and utilizing them in a way that you think might be interesting. It is not an attempt to um, put down somebody else's culture. So it's honestly, if you feel comfortable with doing it, nobody else is going to be there wiser. It's never going to make its way to social media, or it shouldn't be, because it shouldn't be an issue, frankly. So I'm putting it out there. Next, steal from fantasy, steal from science fiction, steal from Dungeons and Dragons lore. Pick something. There's plenty of different deities or pantheons from different fantasy worlds and science fiction, Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, they have a lot there. I'm going to suggest a few pantheons you can use from other cultures right now, uh, ones that people tend to like to use, and that's Norse, Egyptian, Greek, Celtic, Roman. Uh, when we talk about Greek and Roman, they're kind of like the Romans are basically duplicating the Greek um, pantheon, if you weren't unsure what was going on there, it's essentially just a change and the Romans uh, called all their gods based off the planets. Uh, next, um, Aztec, Hindu, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, and the, the list does not stop there. It continues on. Some suggested fantasy pantheons or pantheons that you could use. Uh, Gal Gal is it Galorian? 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 Oh gosh, I hope I got it right. Galorian, the Forgotten Realms, Greyhawk, Dragonlance, Eberron, Mistara. There's a bunch of these. Now you can take these ideas and you can use them as they are, or if you want to make it more your own, you can reverse the names, slightly adjust them, <clears throat> the details around them and their name, and now it's now it's a different god. It's something else. You've built on somebody else's idea and changed it and transformed it into your own sort of thing. <clears throat> Next, world locations. What are the sorts of things we need for world locations? Well, your, location, your locations are probably going to be dependent on a lot of different things. But you will need to have some locations, maybe a settlement or some settlements, maybe a city. Depending on whether you have towns, villages and cities in your world, you might not have any of those sorts of things. But something that is, you're going to have to have something where you're going to start. Okay, we'll get there. There's many places around the real world that you have seen and that you can poach. Whether you've been there before or you've seen it in a picture or on TV or in a magazine, you can poach it, adjust it, apply it to your group play. Not everybody's going to be aware of every single geographic location that exists in the world. So why not use those things? If you're exposed to them and you know about them, use them. What is the starting location for your world? Now the reason you need to make sure you have that is that's where the players are going to start when they have their first adventure in your world. So you need the starting location. It's probably going to need to be a village, town, a settlement, a city, something like that. <clears throat> but you need to make sure you have your starting location already marked down. Okay, that's where we're going to start. Where did the player characters come from? One of the easiest things to do is to get your player characters 
to actually tell you what's the name of the village, town or city they come from. And then you just include that into your world building. What about using your own hometown or city? Now honestly, you know the village, town or city that you live in much better than most people, right? You probably know that place better than anything else. So why not use it in your game? All you need to do, you could keep it the same, but you can modify it. You can use the existing map, okay? Redraw it, rename it, and suddenly you have a whole location that is kind of unique to you and uh, the way that you run your world. The Game Mastery Guide for Pathfinder First Ed Edition here is full of location information for those, those of you who are interested. I, I mean, I could list page numbers, but it's probably a bit pointless. Also, the Dungeon Master Guide for D&D 5e offers a wealth of ideas for locations. You'll also find um, that the Dungeon Master Guide for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Ed Edition, not 2nd Ed Edition, but 1st Ed Edition, has many, many charts and tables and information around how to build out locations. In fact, the 5th Ed Edition um, Dungeon Master Guide is heavily built off the original Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Ed Edition DMG. So that gets your locations sorted out. But we're not finished. World governments, that's right, we need to have some world governments, we need to have some power in the world. Who is in power? Who or what is the government or power in the world? That's the question that you have. You deal with government every single day of your life, okay? This, this should not be hard for you to figure out. You, you are um, interacting with government in some way, in a small way or in a big way, to some degree. So not a difficult question for you to answer. And you can have different governments in different parts of the world, and you only need to worry about one government to start off with because, if there is one, because you're only dealing with part of the world when you start. You don't have to build the entire thing. So different types of civilizations, what are they? Most Dungeon Master Guides actually have this listed. They all, I, I think almost all of them go into far too much detail and make it too difficult and too complicated. So <clears throat> I've shortened that list down for you to make it a little bit easier. The first one is Monarchy. This is uh, ruled by a single, single sovereign leader who is limited by law and serves the citizens. These are your kings and queens, that system. The feudal system. Next we have democracy. It is ruled by elected representatives that the citizens vote for. So you're probably familiar with this if you're living in certain parts of the world. Um, democracy is pretty common, <clears throat> but not always, not always. So there's one um, type of government. Oligarchy, which is a terrible name, and honestly it's, it's painful to actually even consider that the word exists. But this government is formed by a few people or persons or a family or families. So the easiest way to think about oligarchy is tribal. Think tribal. If you think tribal, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. The next one is authoritarianism. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Authoritarianism. It is opposed to individual freedom and thought. It is opposed to free action. And it's usually governed by a central leader. You know what this is. This is a dictatorship. Dictatorships are awesome because... They allow you a conflict between your player characters and what's going on in the world. So one of the first things you certainly want to do, is, if you can, is to have some sort of dictatorship taking place in your world. Really good for actually motivating your players to do something. Because it's always good when they fight against that sort of thing. Next, theocracy. Theocracy is when you have the ruling body are priests or uh, clerics. It's the church, it's temples, or some sort of agent or agents of a deity, god or goddess. So in other words, those in power are those who worship the gods. And uh, it's not a common thing. Uh, certainly theocracy has kind of existed without, um, throughout New um, sort of Earth history, uh, but at, at limited degrees, depending on where you are. Okay, next. The Game Master Guide for, or Game Mastery Guide for Pathfinder First Ed Edition, if you turn to page 148 and 159, right through to there, you'll find a lot of information on different types of government. It's probably way too much information, but if you needed more on these different um, types of government, it's there. Now, if you check out the Dungeon Master Guide, they have a lot of different government styles there. 
Often many of them repeat the same concept over and over again. You'll find that on page 18 to 19 of the DMG for 5e. <clears throat> I would not say it's a particularly good rundown, but it's, it is there. Okay, so that gives you your government. Again, we are not finished. We need to deal with the world species, the world races, the world lineages, whatever you want to call it, okay? So when we're dealing with species and races and your world, the first thing to remember is you don't have to build every single one of them. We, can only, we only need to have a handful. I always suggest five. Player characters haven't actually encountered all of the species or races or lineages in your world. They only have to encounter a few of them because they're only starting their, their exploration and their journey in your world. So pick a few you know from fantasy fiction and add the rest later. Modify real world animals to create fantasy species or races that uh, didn't exist before. Select a handful of species or races from a role playing game book. Just turn, turn to, the, to the, spa, the, the species or race or lineage section and pick out five. And that's where you start. It's very, very simple. It's not hard to do. You can do this. Trust me, you can do this. World magic. How do we deal with world magic? Okay, so <laughs> you actually have to do very little with world magic, but there's a couple of things we need to answer questions to. Does the world have magic? How does it work? Now, really, this, this question is kind of a bit of a crack up because remember, we're dealing with magic. Magic is mysterious and amazing. It may not have an, an answer as to how it works. It just exists. But you do need to answer the question, do I want to have high magic or low magic in my world? More importantly, and probably the key question to be asking over everything else once you've decided if you have magic in your world at all, are there magic shops? It's the first question your players are going to ask you. So make sure you've decided whether you're going to have them or not. And what the nature of those magic shops are likely to be. You don't have to write it all out, but at least have some notes. <clears throat> Is magic connected to technology? Sometimes magic might be different, um, separated from technology. Sometimes it might be interwined or combined. Can the dead be brought back to life in your world by magic? Is that possible or is it not? Is transportation achieved by teleportation in your world, which is magical, or is it not? Uh, are there types of magic and what are they? If there are different types of magic, what might they be? Are we dealing with the different schools of magic from D&D? Are we dealing with elemental magic? Are we dealing with something else completely different? What are the restrictions to magic in the world? There might be restrictions, there might not, but you have to have some sort of idea. Now, you do not need to answer all these questions. The key question you need to answer when you're dealing with magic, which you can do very quickly, is, is there magic in my world or not? Is it going to be high, um, high magic or is it going to be low magic? And are there magic shops? And that will do. The rest you can deal with later on. Okay, pretty simple. Wasn't that hard at all, wasn't it? Next, world technology. World technology seems like a big one, but actually I've broken it down to make it easier for you. So what, what technology does the world have? All worlds have some sort of technology or degree of technology or lack of it. You know about different types of technology from your life experience and your schooling. So you should be able to answer these questions, but... If you are struggling to figure out how this works, I can give you an increment of different levels of technology so you can decide, you can pick out the ones that seem to, to work for what you want and you leave out the stuff you don't. So this is kind of like a progression. Fire creating energy would be the first step possibly in terms of technology. So the first type of technology we're dealing with is, the crea is creating fire and using fire to do stuff with it. Now whether that's to cook or to... Um, uh, burn away uh, wood or um, shape your environment, keep yourself warm, power something, okay? Fire. Next one is windmills, where you use wind power and a mechanical device to actually power something. So windmills would be probably the next one. After that would be steam-powered engines, where you're boiling water, creating pressure, and it's running pistons or a mechanism of some kind, okay? Next one, burning fossil fuels, and this is to power a machine. Now you know about burning fossil fuels because we're right in the middle of burning fossil fuels, petrol, oil, diesel, that sort of stuff. You are completely familiar with that kind of technology. So you could be at that point. Or solar power, energy capture. So you take energy from the sun, you store it, and you use it later on to do something with it. Whether that's to stay warm, power a machine, 
or to um, cook your food. Next, electrical energy generation that is stored later and then used in some way. Now, when I say electrical generation, well, that can be done many different ways. You might be burning fossil fuels, you might be using a steam engine, you might be using a windmill, you might be using solar power, you might be using hydropower. There's a lot of different ways. You might even be actually having something break down. So you might be using um, some sort of um, biological uh, interaction and catalyst to actually create the electrical energy. It's possible. You can power things off a potato if you really wanted to. What about radiation, atomic energy, storing radiation from atomic energy, whether that's fission or fusion, again, another way of doing it. And then finally would be biological technology, where you're actually, your technology is actually connected to the biology um, of the, the world and other creatures. A very different level of, um, of advancement. So those would be your different steps if you're wondering how to deal with technology. Decide which one you want. Or decide which ones you want. You might want more than one. Next, <clears throat> I think I have missed. So no, no, there we are. Monster populations. You thought I was going to miss that out. No, I haven't missed it. What are the monsters in your world? Everyone will find out as the campaign is played out, including yourself as the game master or dungeon master. So select some creatures from the monster book first that you would like to use in your world. And um, that's your starting point. You can, of course, add more as you go, but you don't need to work them all out straight away. Take inspiration from movies about monsters to populate your world. This sort of gives you a, a bit more variety. Uh, books with um, stories about and, and fiction, novels, they can fuel your imagination about monster creation. You can steal ideas or borrow them. Draw from real-world biology and archaeology to create your monster concepts, particularly the more obscure archaeology because it will give you all sorts of sort of fantastical ideas. But real world biology is where most monster creation has started. So you can do the same thing. Not that difficult. It's pretty easy. So that's your monster creation. And as I said, when it comes to monsters, your first, first point of call is pick up a monster book probably or write down some monsters you are familiar with and make a list. Five will probably be enough. When you're wondering how many to do of anything, five. Five is an easy number to deal with. Miscellaneous recommendations. I always have some miscellaneous recommendations when I run this program, so here are my miscellaneous recommendations for you. Just make some sort of world quickly. Get it started, people. Don't leave it. Don't procrastinate. When you start asking the question is, what is the plot of your campaign? Stop. That's not world creation. That is adventure creation and campaign creation. It's a different thing. You don't need to worry about that for your world creation. Put that aside. Forget about that. We'll deal with that later. Okay. This is not a novel. This is not a movie. The plot will unfold as the players play the game. And it's not required for world building, as I said. Just something to remember. Okay. No one knows the truth about anything in your world because of the passage of time and biased. Nobody has a true objective opinion in your world of what is going on. So that means that you can have things that contradict each other, that change over time because people have different views or different species or races in your world have different views of how things work. Uh, that's, that's the nature of our own world. So you don't need to know everything as the game master about your world, but you do need to start. If you don't start, you may never get it done. It's better to get it done than to not do it. Honestly, what could possibly go wrong? Someone would say they don't like your world. Who cares? Honestly, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Most worlds are created by people who really didn't know what they were doing in the first place anyway. You've got to start somewhere. Just give it a go. Now, I'm hoping this was useful to you. And if it was, fantastic. Um, I want to thank my patrons who support me every week. And every month to do this program because I really do help and thank you so much. I want to thank you for watching and hey till next time keep rolling those 20s. Okay people hello welcome back it's world building it's been about two and a half months been a while since we've done anything with this hasn't it it's been a long time let's have a look at chat 
and then we're going to get started making some stuff. I don't know how people feel about what they want to build today. Um, obviously, if people are all going in different directions, it's going to be very difficult. We'll see what people want to do. I had suggested um, Clockwork World, but we don't need to do that. We could do anything you like. Let's have a look at what people have got in chat here first. Um, Dinomancer. Hello, Dinomancer. Dinomancer is a patron. Thank you for being here. Jeremy um, Brock, Brock and Blue. Hello. How, how's it going, Jeremy? An evil undead massive functioning city. Okay. All right. Um, I'm not sure what where we're going with this. An evil undead massive functioning city. Uh -huh. Dinomancer. An undead city where criminals are used as um, mortar and stone for repairs and maintaining the city. Very dark people. Very, very dark. So... So there's a few people in chat who are looking to do something around Undead, I see. The chat, I can see the, 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 the poll is starting to change, though, very quickly. So I don't think that's going to be likely. It looks like the clockwork idea might wind up winning out. Looks like it might. Um, over time, the city resembles a multicellular organism such as stone, cobble made from undead bone and blood. Very dark. Other governments are... Is it Gen Gero Trice other people rule? Um ecocracy, the best people rule. Hmm, okay, alright. How's it going, Dungeons and Chronics? How are you? Uh we've got Overboard. How are you doing Overboard? Overboard is a patron and also a moderator, been with me a while. He's got a YouTube channel as well. So I think we're gonna be doing clockwork. I think we're gonna be doing clockwork from the poll and the people who have voted, is there are ten people who voted. And people want to do the clockwork idea, and I, th I think that's where we're going to go, okay? So when I say clockwork, I mean robots. Cl clockwork robots, clockwork and robots can be powered many different ways. So when I say this, that means we probably need to consider how many different types of clockwork and robot are we going to include, rather than just one type. Because remember... We can have quite a broad range of things going on. And, okay, so let's, uh, I'll leave that poll going. How's it going, Ancient Dragon? How are you? Okay. I think we're ready to get started. Um, I see there's been quite a big, a big drop-off in uh, people in here, so we'll see how we go. We're just going to jump over and start uh, building something, get it started, and hopefully we get some people jumping in here and interacting. Let's see. Um, that's the one I want. I need to get my phone organized in front of me. Um, my head is starting to feel a little bit hot, so I'm going to take this off. Sorry, people. Get the bald head. I just need to make sure I'm feeling comfortable uh, while I do this. And then we are going to go over here. I will expand this. And then I will share the screen. I uh, believe that's it's probably about right. Um, yeah, that should work. So this is what we're starting with. This is where we start. This is the easy bit. This is the easy bit. Right, I get my phone going. So this is just a template. There's nothing here. We have to fill it all in. Um, you're probably thinking, oh, this is going to take too long. We'll never get this done. You, when you're building a world, you do not need to build everything, as probably a lot of people have told you before. But also, too, um, a lot of your world building can take place as you're going, because often world building never ends. And so I, I've come across so many people who've just, they just never got started. So they never wind up doing their own homebrew world. They wind up using somebody else's stuff because it's there. Um, and you, you, you can do your own stuff, and it, it's fine. You know, it's going to be as good as anybody else's. It's going to be as good as anybody else's. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got here. I think the first thing is, I'm going to get comfortable and pull out my my uh, keyboard, and we are going to uh, we're going to get you to name the world. So hashtag, I I want between five and ten different names for a world. We're going to do that first. Hashtag, um, what is the name? 
of the world. Now I'm going to t I'm going to chuck in a, a few suggestions myself. We're talking about a clockwork world, since that seems to be what we're building today. And um, let's do that back there. Let's drop this down. Bring this back. Okay, good. And then we'll go down again. Okay, so. Um, Let's do an underline, a bold, something nice and simple to start with. I think clockwork, uh, we're going to go, let's go as in machine, mech, uh, tron. Not Megatron, but Mechatron. Can we get away with that one? I don't think we've breached anything. It's not Megatron. It's not Cybertron. There's one suggestion from me. Not necessarily the best. Uh, what about Cortex? Cortex. All right, so while you, while I'm laying out the rest of my stuff, you're going to throw some ideas at me, and uh, and we'll see which ones stick. Of course, I usually write down most things. As long as you're not too naughty about it, I will usually write it down, okay? It's, it's usually a given that I will do it. Um, so let's go down here, and while I'm waiting for some names to come through, we will lay out the next one. And this is going to be a bold underline. And drop this down. That's good. Okay. Who would have guessed? <clears throat> okay. Now, if you're wondering or having trouble coming up with a name for the world, my suggestion to you is... Consider some combinations of words. Um, we, 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 whatever we're doing with your, your world creation, consider different words that you can combine to make a new word, will, word. Okay, here we go. Overboard has got our first one. Uh, mech. This is quite a big long word. And that's our first one. Mechada. All right, Dungeons and Chronics isn't here now. Now, is there anything I need to do? Oh, it's just going to tell me it's spelt wrong because it's a new word. word. Uh, gear. Geropia. Geropia. Nice one. Good. I got it down. So we've got four so far. While you're working on that, I will start laying out some of these other sections that we need to work on. Um, bold, underline, I might just chuck my glasses back on so I can see what's going on. And we're doing fine, there we go. So if you've never been with me doing this sort of stuff before, I can assure you we normally have the whole thing done within the time frame. It's, it's quite normal, uh, which means if we can do it, you can too. <laughs> it's, it's not impossible at all. Ah, Ancient Dragon, you have, you've, uh, you've weighed in here. Let's see what, what's the name. Now we can see these names that we're creating, they can be the name of the world, but they could be the names of continents. So we can still repurpose them, even though the list is sort of like a collection. It's like a brainstorm. Uh, mech. And try not try not to pull something that's IP and chuck it in here. If it's something that's IP, adjust it a little bit so it's it's not somebody else's stuff. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so we now have five, and I'm going to keep laying out these these various different things that'll give people an opportunity to come up with a few more names. And we're doing all right so far. Um, uh, where are we? Sweet, sweet, sweet. A lot of formatting going on here. You're probably thinking, is that what I showed up for? Ah, here we go. Tectronic. Tectron. Ah, okay. All right. Yes, yes. Let's do that one. That's an another. That'll that'll be a decent one. Let's do this one. Tech. 
ton tectona tectonic tectona 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 as in like tech and toner from a pr uh, printer tectona clever i think that's what, what you've done there tectona nice so we, we so far we have six names that are kind of meant to sort of represent clockwork or mechanical or robot or something like that. Something that sort of indicates that the world we're dealing with is not a biological world anymore. It's something else. Do we? Okay, so let's just tag in another number here and come over here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. One of the easiest ways to deal with name uh, the name of naming of a world or a continent is to come up with the name of an existing thing and then look at the variations that it might have. So a theosaurus can be quite useful to you. Do you know what I mean? So you, you've got, when you think about Earth, Earth can be called dirt. It could be rock, could be called rock. I mean, the fact that Earth is called Earth is kind of funny. We've literally named it after dirt. Uh, third rock from the sun, um, but it can be called a lot of other things. So you can do the same sort of thing. Uh, this is this is why you'll notice that the the tendency is for the name to be sort of variations of something that has to do with mechanics, technology, um, gears, machinery, stuff like that. Uh, let me just keep filling these in while you're coming up with ideas. Uh, that's not what I want. I want to bold and underline, bold and underline, bold and underline. Sweet. Okay. Well, I think maybe we'll move on. We've got, we've got six names. We can do some races. If there's some more worlds that you want to add, so if somebody decides to add in a world and we've moved on, just do hashtag world and what the name of the world is so I know where to put it. That's the best thing you can do if you're here and you're starting, you're still trying to think about what would be a good um, name of a world or a continent for this um, process. But you come up with an idea later on, just put hashtag world and whatever it is. Okay. Next, let's go hashtag. Hashtag. Um, what are some, I guess, clockwork, uh, not clock, but clock work or robot um, species or races so these are the things that would be playable um, tick tonic what's that tech to Toe tonic nine four seven. I'm a little bit lost on that one. Oh, I see what you're doing here. <laughs> tick tick tock. Uh, let's call it tock. Let's give it a name. We will use put tock as well. We'll make that separate. So coming up with your races. Now, if it's not really clear what the race is and you need to give a little bit of description, it might be a good idea. Do you know what I mean? So Pale Rider, hello, welcome here. So our first race today is uh, Cog, Cogoloth. Cogoloth. I'm going to put a little dash here. What is the Cogoloth? So give us an idea of what the Cogoloth is. I'm going to put down here the soul uh, noid. Not not the soul solenoid, solenoid, solen soul noid. That's what I want. Don't do it again. All right, good. Solar noid. Now this is a, a robot powered by the sun that shuts down. At night very specific <laughs> that's my my contribution to the races races and species there we go there we go as you are coming up with your ideas I will sit here and drink some water <clears throat> and 
um, I'm going to do some more fair formatting while you are coming up with some uh, more clever ideas for our races and species. Um, magic, we'll come back to you. And drop this down. Move this along. Hold underline and there. So for those of you who don't, an ogre-sized robot with a lot of cogs. Perfect. Just what we were after. So for those of you who are feeling a little intimidated by the whole process, don't feel intimidated. Just throw the ideas out there. I usually just write down everything. As long as it's not too naughty, we're, we're all good. Okay. Um, an ogre size sized robot with lots with lots with lots of cogs. Let's just put ogre, ogre sized. Okay. Hello, Charles. Charles Butler is also a patron. Thank you for being here. Right. Gremlins, the bane of the world. Gremlins. <laughs> gremlins. I think we know what gremlins are. <laughs> Next. Um, the cam Cambold. Okay, so I need to know, you need to tell me a little bit more about the Cambold. Hello, F. Hubber, how are you doing? I'm good at arriving late. Fred, it's all right, there's still plenty of time. It's not the end of the world, it really isn't. Um, I'm going to put here Cyborgs. Um, half machine and half um biological the last remnants the cyborgs are the last remnants of humanity or the biological entities that used to be on the world got to have something like that right cyborgs <clears throat> um and they may well be the most aggressive who knows it depends um variations or inevitables hello big kid big kid is also a patron welcome Okay, so let's let's type in the inevitables. So you need to you need to explain to people what an inevitable is, Fred, in a very short sentence. Okay, because I can write it down. But sort of like a breakdown as to what what is that? So we still don't know what the the Campbell are, uh, but we've got a name. We don't need to know what the inevitables are. Noroak. Hello, Noroak. How are you? Noroak is also a patron. So, um, I see the patrons have come out. That they have arrived. I, I, now, I, I can see it now. We've got a good chunk of our, our thinkers here. So, there's going to be a lot of ideas. If you are new to my live streams, don't feel, really don't feel uh, like you, you can't comment. You can. Just hit the subscribe button for five minutes, wait, and then start typing in. Okay? And, uh, look... We, I, I write, I write, honestly, I write, I write down most stuff in this document when we're doing this sort of thing. Oh, the inevitables. Okay, uh, right, as in the untouchables. <laughs> okay, uh, very powerful robot law. You've got law man uh, law. Men. We'll do that. We'll do that. Okay, that should that should do quite nicely. Um, Campbell. So okay, a smaller version of a significantly larger mechanical monstrosities. Campbells are apt at maintaining the large mechanical creatures, but will. Uh, this is this is quite a lot of information here. Machine ghost. I was wondering if somebody would bring that up. I feel like the Machine Ghost, do you want to make that a race? Because I was almost willing to leave Machine Ghost or Ghost in the Machine as a monster. But a law bot. Oh, you want to make it law bot. Okay, we'll, we'll, okay so what we'll do is we'll take that. We'll go law bot. Oh, I see. I see what you see. I see. It. Here we go. Yes. Now, now that makes sense. Better idea. Lawbot, I understand what you're trying to say here. I get it. 
Okay, got it. So I need to, I'm going to just do a, a quick cut and paste here. So it's the screen's going to get a little whack. Um, I'm going to apologize, but it's just faster for me to pull it straight from that chat and chuck it straight in. Um, and it's going to go here. I get rid of all of the formatting. A smaller version of a significantly larger mechanical monstrosities. Camels are... So there's quite a lot of information on them. Sweepers. Interesting. We've got sweepers next. The machine ghost. I, I, I should pull a machine ghost over. So sweepers. So again, I'm going to ask you, you explain to me what a sweeper is. Okay, so uh, machine ghost. And the machine ghost is an ethereal race that can inhabit and take over medium to small. Ah, good, good for you. We don't want them taking over the giant big mechs, do we? <laughs> that would cause problems, wouldn't it? Oilers, Lawbot, okay, I think I got what you're talking about here, we, I, we almost got 10 races, which is more than we need, so, um, Oilers, I don't know, what, what are the Oilers, <laughs> what are the Oilers, um, Cog Boys, okay, uh, what's this, um, Oh, I see. Dungeons and Chronics. All good blow. I, I'm going to have to move you guys onto a, a new thing because we've got more than enough species and races. So I'm going to I'm going to type this in. So you, at this point now, if you want to add any more species or races, you've got to go hashtag species or spe um, hashtag race and then what it is and a little bit of information about it for me to include it. So we're moving on because we've got plenty of them. Hashtag what uh, sorry, what uh the deities name and domain okay all right let me let me catch up on your your ideas because there's a lot of stuff floating out there now i just need to collect it all up um this is always my, my problem is you guys start firing up ideas faster than I can keep up, which is always wonderful, but it, it, sh it shows just how bad I am at typing and trying to focus on big text and little text at the same time. Um, with gears, brains, Okay, all right, okay, so gear for the brains. That's, that'll do. That'll do, that'll do. That, that'll do fine. I'm happy with that. Oilers are maintenance droids. Okay, Oilers. Maintenance droids. Okay, Oilers are maintenance droids. Um, sweepers. Oh, what is a sweeper? Oh, that's the that's the small that's not the oiler. Oh, whoopsie, put it in the wrong place. So I cut that sweeper, paste maintenance droids. Um, what am I looking at? The maintenance droids, small maintenance droids. Oh, oilers are maintenance droids, and that's a small maintenance droids. Oh, okay, all right. No wonder I was getting confused. Paste. So this is medium and larger no medium medium maintenance droids we don't want people went rocking around on big huge mechs if we can help it straight away off the hello major laser how are you okay all right uh campbell's my lazy ripoff of kobolds and their fascination with dragons uh 
but did anybody notice it? Did anybody figure it out? Your cam bold. Does anybody even know that you had taken the idea from the Cobold? You've changed the name slightly and you've readjusted a little bit of it and you, I didn't notice it. Did somebody else? Okay. Roomba's gone wild. Um, the automated first. Okay. So, okay. So this is, this is another one. Let's just type this in here. Bombas. What's a Romba? We, we've already got a bunch of um, deities that are coming up real fast. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. All right. So I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to port that straight off over from what you've written here. Let's just take that straight out and chuck it straight over here. It's going to be just quicker. The automated factories kept making them bigger, uh, then clean up after humanoids, and they swept up the sources of the of the messes. Okay, um, okay, all right. I, I'm sh I'm I'm not too sure what else we're doing with that, but I've I've got it down. Amnesia, is that a, that's a, that's a god, gods and goddesses. Uh, right, let's have a look here. It might not even be a, I mean, it might be just a deity as and it doesn't have a, a sex at all. I mean, it would probably make sense that a lot of the deities don't, aren't like gods or goddesses. They're just deities. As, oops, let's try to do that again. Okay. <clears throat> Am. Amnesia. I don't know what amnesia is. Of. Is of. Of. Of is. But yeah. The Great Maker. The Great Maker. Come on, Fred. Great Maker. And what is the Great Maker of? Um, he who made... The first intelligent uh, mechanoid. Are we sort of to, to su suggesting that maybe um, the biological intelligence of the world has ascended to some other sort of state, and they have created the the mechanoids? It's an interesting idea. I think I know what you're doing, doing there, um, Fred. Just joined on. This is a steampunk or fantasy. We're kind of going fantasy steampunk. So it's 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 really, we're looking clockwork robot world. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different today. Uh, what do we got here? God of, all right, okay. Cog Robotus. Gosh, I hope I got it right. Um, God... Of invention. Okay, that was pretty simple. I'm just looking to see how many we've already got. We've already got a bunch. So I am going to um, collect up those ideas, hashtag, and I'm going to move you on to a new task. Uh, because there's no point staying on that task if we've already got what we need. So um, what is the world's... What is the... What is the world creation story okay now try to keep it short keep it keep it short and sweet okay short and sweet short and sweet on this uh, on these uh, world creation stories um, I've kind of gone over world creation stories before with you in the presentation, so you should be relatively familiar with them. So it shouldn't be too hard. I need some water, and then we'll continue. Mm. It's going to be interesting when we get to te technology. I'm looking forward to what happens when we get to technology. Uh, and I've just got to make sure I keep up with the, the different... Um, deities which i'm not it's clear that i have not so okay 
bear with me people i am going to do a lot of cutty pasty uh, jumping back and forth to get it done because if i don't it just i won't keep up i can see you guys already jumped ahead of me a lot quite a bit um cog nice reference um okay here we go this one here giver of law we'll do that one no formatting done next uh next one here jeez nice one nice one fred what do you got here charles asimov asimov as in the writer giver of laws <laughs> as the novel writer uh pervertus goddess of adjustment cleaning lubrication repairs and replacements <laughs> nice charles nice job okay uh, bastion the god of civilization from noroak Okay, it's going to be a messy stream for a second while I do this. But I'm going to catch up. Okay, Bender, the mech that bent the laws to free the mechanoids. This is from Fred. Okay, let's jump into here. Man, you guys are on fire today. Um, Coda, the goddess of glitches and malfunctions. That's a clever idea. I don't know why it's doing that, but it's not roll one over here. Format coder malfunctions. Uh, next, uh, rhombus a purposefully misspelt romba. Oh, okay. Um, what's this tax? No, come on. Let's go. This all right? Almost caught up. Almost caught up. Okay, uh, tax breaker, the god, goddess of the spending and commerce. Okay, so there's there's a few here. Let's um, put in some formatting. And we are doing pretty good. Okay. right nice job that is uh that is a lot that's a lot of stuff uh fulgrim oh, okay here we go fulgrim the god of factories and schedules okay that's i'm going to type those in so we're going back to not jumping back and forth because that's probably giving you a headache <laughs> uh fulgrim the god of factories and malfunctions there's a lot of malfunctioning going on here i see oh men 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 you manufacturing manufacturing okay we've got that one um what has big kid got here i've got joe's one it's limba 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 my eyes are going on me again it sucks when your eyes get old. Uh, God of... And the, and the glasses just won't help either. Uh, scheduled maintenance. <laughs> uh, nice. Uh, as long as it's not purty, eh? It could be purty, but it ain't purty today. Right, let's... Uh, Let's have a look. So we've got our, look, we've got 11 um, gods and goddesses and deities in here, of which only one of them doesn't have a domain, which is amnesia. So uh, that's that's not too bad. That's pretty good. We're, uh, we're, <laughs> we've got that mostly filled out. And it's top of the hour, and I should be taking a break. But I know if I step away, I'm doomed. I want to have at least five creation stories. We currently have three creation stories from Charles, Fred, and Noroak, and um, I am going to come back to that. So uh, I'm going to type in here, need two more world creation stories. Five is enough, 
so when we have five, um, two more, I, I will say, let, let's let's stop and move on to the next thing, which is fine with me. I have no problems what, whatsoever. Uh, so let's have a look here. Let's go for a break. And as it happens, my break screen just happens to be Arnold Schwarzenegger from The Terminator. How did that happen? It had to happen at some point. So five minutes or less, I will be back and we'll continue and we will finish off the creation stories and then move into locations, monsters, magic and technology. I'm heading back in. Let's have a look and see how people have been doing in terms of uh, the ideas they've thrown out there. All right. <clears throat> uh, getting comfortable again. Getting back into the groove. All right. Oh, you got my head for a second. You know why you've got my head for a second? It just means that I can jump in and out very, very quickly and grab the things that I need to. You know it. Here we go. Uh, <clears throat> so you guys have actually already done the creation stories in the time I have been gone. You have already come up with a whole bunch of different ideas. <clears throat> ah, okay. Oh, I see. I see. That's a, that's a deity there. That's All right, so we're going to take that out there and I'll put that over there. Okay, so... That means I probably need to move you on to the next step. If you guys have been working so fast and so hard, it would probably make sense to give you the next task. Because it looks to me like we have... We have five. Or do we not have five? Probably, maybe not. Maybe we don't. Ah, I see. So, Fred, you've gone with mechanoids like Nomad and um, and Star Trek. Don't believe humanoids could have made the first mechanoids, but they they know something had to do it. Right. So that's sort of that's sort of like um, we, what we're doing is like it's not completely known, but we know that somebody must have done it. Something or someone. Just who is it? That's a, that's quite clever. Uh, I quite like that. A, so what have you got here, Norok? A wandering robotic race found a good universe for harvesting and decided to make an outpost. Oh, I see. Ah, all right. Okay, so that's how the world is created. It's kind of like colonization, isn't it? It's a little bit like colonization. And what's the next one you've got here? 
Um, the beings of this world are being, this is from um, Overboard, the world are building things at an alarming rate and they don't realize that they are uh, draining the planet's core. Things are shutting down left and right, but no one knows why. Ah, okay. This is, there's something going on here that's interesting. Let's chuck that in here as well. Okay, and uh, I believe I saw Big Kid had written in something as well. Uh, my phone's not picking up everything, by the way, so I'm having some trouble. I can't read off my phone to actually drop the stuff in. My phone is not updating. So even though you can't see the document, I am actually cutting and pasting your ideas in. Um, I don't, I honestly, this, it's got to be, it's got to be a, a YouTube thing. Because um, it's not like my phone isn't reasonably powerful and it's not like I don't have a decent internet connection so it's got to be it's got to be YouTube uh, just uh, I got company I'm here but I won't I won't be too useful not that I'm a, that's all right dungeon to chronics that's fine you, you you know if you got if you got people to that you're around and you need to do your thing with them that's perfectly fine go do that okay all past points to biological creators. Okay, so we're just going to just tag that in. That's from Fred. We'll put that in there as well. Um, okay. Okay, so this is... Okay, so this is interesting. We've got a few more ideas there that I haven't grabbed, but I will. Uh, the great cosmic worm, uh, worm gear. The, Charles, what have you got? What have you cooked up here? <laughs> You've got something um, set up here. This is you guys have done really, really good work, really fast too. So the great cosmic worm gears spinning against each uh, will grind the oil spacer. Other had pieces shared off and created the known mechanical worlds. I'm a little bit lost as to what's going on here. <laughs> Someday cosmic uh, worm gear will consume the world. All right, so okay, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to translate that. So combining them is unnecessary overboard because you can run all of them at the same time. Some stupid hero threw a mech. <laughs> let's, let's put this on. Uh, I didn't even have a chance to read it, but as soon as I started reading, I was already laughing. Some stupid hero threw a um, a mech into a sun, and the mech that harvested the sun and used its uh, resources to make a planet. Very clever. Very, very clever. And mechanoids greatly fear the rust monster. I bet they do. We, we, look, okay. So I've, my phone has finally caught up. I will transition back to our work page so you can see what's going on. And uh, I will be able to hopefully keep a track of what's going on here. Which means, creation stories galore. Yes, creation stories galore. Uh, well done. In a very, very short space of time. I, I, I was not expecting that to be so quick. But it is. <laughs> I should know better. By now I should know better. Yeah, no, no, it's all right. I, I've, uh, I will sort it out. So I'm going to do a hashtag here in the chat, and you guys can come up with five locations. We need to have a starting location, okay? So hashtag, what are, what are some world locations? Okay, there you go. So while you guys are doing your world creation stuff, I'm going to do a bit of formatting and try to tidy up our world creation stories so they make a little bit more sense because they, they're a little, little bit off kilter. It's a little bit hard to figure out what's going on there, but I, I, will, um, I will dissect them. I'm not saying that my English is better than yours. I'm just saying it's a little bit hard for me to understand. If I can't understand it, we're in real big trouble. <laughs> so uh, Let's keep going. Doing well though, we are uh, we we are what halfway just after, over halfway through, and we've got locations, monsters, magic, and technology to do. And 
Honestly, I think we're going to buzz through that like super fast. Not going to be a problem. Who said world building was hard? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, various locations. Assembly plant. Right. Okay. Fred, I'm, I've got it. I see it. I'm on, I'm on it. What are we going to call it, though? An assembly plant mechanoid activation station. We, we need a name for it. So we don't have a name for this thing. But we, we know what it is. Um, assembly plant mechanoid activation station. Please don't tell me that's the name of it. <laughs> that, that would be a bit frightening. All right, there we go. I think I'm going to grab a, a lozenger. New Nitro, the city of enhancement and creativity. Very nice. New Nitro, night. New Nitro, the city. Whoops. City of Enhancement and Creativity. Ha ha! What do you got here, Fred? Okay. Um, okay, so this is... Right. So we don't have a name for it, but we know what it is. Um, let's go here. Recharging slash refueling uh, deport. Okay, I got it. Next, gears and bolts and bolts. Sorry, a robot. Robots version. Oh, good lord version of a tavern clever nice idea very very clever okay nano city nano city from pale rider what do you got here uh, it's periodically oh they name things on okay so in other words, these are just functional places. They don't have names. Okay, Fred. Understood. <clears throat> Understood. I get. I get where you. I, I see your point. We do have five locations now, so um, we could move on to monsters, but we're not. We're going to keep going. Give me a couple more locations. Something else a bit juicy. We need something. That's going to terrify the robots. Uh, our, our robotic clockwork world races, and mon uh, we want something we can put. R like, there's got to be something. Like, we've got to have the the great junkyard. <clears throat> Where old robots uh, go to die. <clears throat> like that's that was my be my suggestion. <laughs> oh nice. Um That's funny. That's really, really funny. We've got an inn, we've got uh, another city. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's move it on. Let's move it on to monsters. I th I think I can get those down. Hashtag What are uh, some monsters in the world. Now, they don't need to be clockwork robot monsters, but it's still fun to do something like that if you want to. Um, I'm going to put down my first monster, uh, Nan, Nano, um, Nanobytes, uh, micro, Microscopic. Microscopic um, bots that 
infect other clockwork clockworks or robots it's like a, I guess a, we could even have a computer virus you could even mark down a computer virus virus for this a renewal center okay so I'll, I'll get down all of the different locations it seems like we've got a few I'm gonna do a bit of a catch-up and to, to so that your brains don't get all wacky um, I'm going to jump over to my face while I do this so I can catch up without making a bit of a mess because I know I've done that and it's kind of it's a bit it's a bit of a pain for you guys so I, I don't want to do that so I will try not to do that if I can uh, let's see so nano city by pale rider is going to be my first introduction to what it periodically hits and get and periodically gets hit with nano storms like sandstorms but nano bots instead oh nice okay we've got we've got that one um the lube and luxurious brothel <laughs> A brothel for robots and clockworks. Aha. I see. I should have guessed. It was going to happen at some point, right? <laughs> Robot sex. Oh, <geez>. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Okay. We've got it. It's in. I marked it down. Um, City Zero from Charles. What does City, uh, City Zero from Charles look like here? Um, so, we've got a lot of cities. So, believed to be a sacred spot where the first machines arose. Okay, unfortunately, many mechs believe the exact spot is slightly different. <laughs> That'll cause some problems. I like it. There, there in itself is going to be a bit of fun. Nice one, Charles. Well done. Copper and gear in, located in, okay, all right, okay, so let's, oh, overboard, you've just removed it, oh, I was about to copy it, I was about, I almost copied it overboard, I didn't get to it, you, you've taken it out, that's fine, um, Charles, overboard is the city of uh, lubrication known for uh, party, partying as well have it be your origin for phrase like lube it up oh god jeez here we go ah uh, dear anyway I guess it's not it's not hardcore it's not hardcore go to die okay I've got that in I've got the renew, renewal center where they can order a new and improved me uh, mechanoid for their el electronic brain okay got that very curious about how people are doing with the uh, their monster creations um, upgrades are us. Oh, I've been here before. Upgrade CPU motors. Okay. Don't knock it to clock it. <laughs> okay. All right. The puns are, are are flying free. We are not free of puns. There are a lot of we're going to be a lot of punning today. Okay. Upgrades are us. Okay, so I think I've got this. Upgrade CPU motors to power systems. Okay, so I think it's all the locations that you had. Ismail uh, also wrote a variant story versus iRobot where the humanoid robots took over. Mm -hmm. Monster. Okay, so we've got some we've got some monsters now. Charles has started the. 
That's, you've got to be kidding. What is this? Monster. Um, magnetic iron golems. What an idea. Magnetic iron golems. Pull in mechs until they uh, stick to its body and then picks them apart to eat. Ugh. Rough. Pretty, pretty rough. I love it though. Very clever. <laughs> uh, liquefiers. So what is Pale Rider? Got liquefiers here. Sounds very nasty. Will we like it? Liquefiers. Giant metal eating plant creatures. Mmm. They attack with acid. Well, I don't know that we're going to make that as a question mark. I think that's going to be a definitely. That's what. That's that's how. That's how they work. They had attack with acid. Yes, acid and uh, cybernetics probably not going to work too well. The Hackasaurus, the Hackasaurus hex. Oh my. Um, a huge robot dinosaur that enables and disables tech around it. Oh, jeez, really? <laughs> I knew this was a good idea. I'm not regretting having um selected this uh as a as let, let's try this. When I picked the picture, I was like, is this gonna work? Are people gonna be like bored? Apparently not. Uh, so this is an electrical demons. Electrical demons. Of course we have electrical demons. So they get into the circuits of a mech. They cause all manner of uh, trouble. I like it. Let's put down um, computer virus. Because it's pretty obvious what that is and uh, we can use it computer virus and uh, we, we have we got enough I think we might have an, an enough of uh, I mean this is just a starting point right so we can do a lot more with this if we want to but here we go I'm gonna just switch back over I've got a um, I've got a suggestion a few ideas that I want to share, so I will. Um, what was the idea? It was in my head. Oh, uh, Dragonoid. Uh, mechanical. Uh, winged. Dragon. Nice and simple, we know what it is. That's pretty easy. Dragonoid. Um, oh yes. Um, machine spirit. A um, Oh, machine spirit, the ghost left from a dead robot or um, clockwork. So, we've got a few. The great machine, all oh, right, okay, yes, yes. Uh, let's drop that in here, and I think we would normally go to magic, but I think we should do technology. So let's let's do that. Hashtag. Um, what technology 
is in the world. So, let's start dealing with that. You can check in, but you can't disconnect <laughs> the mainframe. All right, I see, I see your ideas there. So we're going to do technology next. And um, in terms of time, we're doing pretty well. So we'll switch over here. And I will just drop in a few of these ideas that you've put in. The great mainframe is uh, Fred's idea, so let's grab that. Okay. Um, all right, okay, I get it. It's like a collective. A joining of mechanoid android brains into a supercomputer the size of Australia. Woo! Looks, looks and sounds terrifying. But we're going to use it. Of course we are. Of course we're going to use it. Remember, I went over technology before. If you need me to cover it again, I will. Um, we can power anything on pretty much anything we like. Like it's like you could have just about anything you want. Transformers Rogue Mechs that break down other tech to um, to create new things. Ah, okay. That's fine. We'll add that in. Um, we have a lot of monsters. So, so here, here biomancy. So, so technology. To give you an idea, of when I say technology, this is what I mean. There's different types of technology, right? You have um, fire is a type of technology. You've got wind power. You could have steam powered robots. You could have fossil fuel powered robots that are they have a, a wood burner in them like that. You could have solar powered. Maybe they've got I don't know uh, microscopic solar panels that they place on themselves so that they can. Um, energize themselves and function and then of course when the sun goes down they shut down uh, you could have atomic energy power plants in them you could have biological technology uh, where they they maybe maybe you've got a robot that feeds on another go very matrix that feeds on a biological entity to generate power because it can't generate enough power itself so it just it links itself in with something like that the very matrix um, so yeah, just just throw out the ideas and we'll see what sticks. Because I think this is, I mean, that's that's really going to be the, oops, bugger. So yeah, does that make sense? I'm hoping that makes sense. I think I've just about caught up on most of what you've put in here. But I'm I'm trying to make sure I, I am. Uh, energy is produced by harvesting living organisms. Bioenergy. The, yeah, that that that's Noro could put that out already. Very matrix. Uh, next. They might even they might even um, collect it from um, plants. copy so let's do your technology is uh, spring wound powered sources yes using used recharge when a mech is traveling and really sh um, remote yes e e exactly spring wound keeps it s really simple then Sources use use um, uh, okay spring tension um, sources used to use for recharging. Make it 
Right, so I've got that down. Okay, cool. We're going very triffid now. <laughs> ah, dear. All right, let me just jump. Let's jump us back over to this work screen so you can see what's going on and what I've put on here. All right, that'll just solve a lot of our problems. I might type in one my arm of my own actually. Now that I think about it, um, so Mike Roscopic Solar Panels uh, that store on a store large. Uh, Quantities, quantities, quant, quantities of energy um, of solar energy. I mean, it's the sort of technology we would we would like to have, right? So I'm I'm putting it in. Let's have that. The Stirling engine power, an external heat source is powered. Ah, right. Here we go. Let's let's put that in there. Any external heat heat source, uh, yes, is um, power. Okay, it's power. Sterling engine power. Any external heat source is power that can be collected in a capacitor I think that's what Fred was trying to get at uh, Triffids stealing power water oil river mills that store energy uh, okay so oil River mills that store energy. Okay. I've got that down. What else we got here? I feel like we, we're pretty close to sort of smashing it. Steam powered boilers. Yes, the Carbell, a group of mechanoid ghosts that inhabit. Um, matte black humanoid shells that power themselves with souls. Whoa, dark and nasty. <laughs> okay, so let's go. I think we've got. I think we've got plenty of stuff around power. Um. Oh, what about? <sighs> um. Arc. Re. Actor. Um, uh, batteries. Um, atomic energy. Um, power plants. Let's go fission and fusion. And I will drop in a few of these other things here that you've got marked down here that I need to put in here. There's three different ideas, so we're going to go hashtag, and let's let's deal with the next thing. I, I think that's um, uh, what or how does magic work in the world? Like, I'll let you start thinking about the magic question now while I catch up on all the things you put down for technology because we've got a lot here, which is great. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's do that.
back to my face while I do the uh, the cut and pasty thing and just to clean up what we have not grabbed so far. Mr. Fusion. There you go, Mr. Fusion. We're going to call it Mr. Fusion. Mr. Fusion. Let's go Mr. Fusion and Mrs. Fission. Something like that. I don't I don't know. Uh, does that make sense? Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, anyway, we've got plenty of ideas floating around. It just occurred to me that Sterling engine power mix um, would be um, parasites on other bots. Okay. Well, we have a lot of parasitic things for our robots, don't we? That was that was pretty obvious when we were doing that part of it as we got a whole bunch. The Cabal, a group of machine ghosts that inhabit matte black humanoid shells that power themselves with souls. Very, very dark. <laughs> very dark. <coughs> Pale Rider, very dark. Let's do the steam-powered boilers because I like the idea of having steam-powered uh, robots. Seems like too much fun. The fact that you could have a world where there's different levels of technology, very vastly different de levels of technology, is just too much fun. Power, okay, so um, steam powered boilers are using a luxury power, um, power source by the rich elite mix as they are among the few who can buy enough wood and coal to use. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> In, that's an interesting twist on things. Motion power. The robots generate energy while moving. Noroak. Clever. Very, very clever. Let's just put that in. Um, so we have plenty of ideas around technology. Obviously, you would need to have something like that. Um... <laughs> so we have oh as Mr. Fusion was supposed to be a uh, what was that supposed to be Mr. Fusion magic works how does magic work I think that's what you were saying I get this distinct feeling do you guys not want to include magic in this world is this world one of those worlds where it doesn't have magic it's got technology I guess that's the question to ask is like are you thinking would prefer not to include stuff around magic because would like to have it more based on technology rather than the mixture of magic and technology. So those of you who are in the in the chat, just say, do you want magic or do you not want magic? Just just fire away. I know you can. Alright, so let's uh, let's see what you've got here. You've got a bunch of things that have occurred. Mm-hmm. All right. So we've got yeah, that's there's quite a bit there. All right, so let's let's just port them over. Gosh, I hope I manage to get enough time to actually put this up onto Patreon at the end of the week. I forgot end of the week I'm uh, rebuilding the fighter for Dungeons and Dragons 5e doing a fix. I, I suppose you could call it a fix or a remaster, but since I don't really like what um Wizard of the Coast is doing. I thought I'd do my own thing. I've been talking about that for so long, so that's in a couple of days. Uh, next. Animated non-AI robotic creatures under your control. Okay, I see. I see. I see what this is supposed to be. It's supposed to be attached to that. I get it. I got it. It's in. It's done. Hamon. Hecromacy, 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 hecromacy. That's magic, hecromacy. Okay. Um. Okay, let's take Fred's idea and let's port this in. Uh, 
and see what uh, see how that looks. Um, if the mechanoids can't explain it with science, they can't use it. Uh, this gets in the way of using many kinds of magic. Okay, so and of course we can have that exist in a world where there is in fact magic as well. Like this, 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 this would work fine. Femency. So Charles, what do you got here, Charles? Magic control of iron is basically magnets. Oh, I see, I see. I get it. Understood. Magical control of femacy. 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 Right, what else have we got here? Um... No magic. Big kid wants no magic. All right, so there'll be some people who either there's no magic or believe there is no magic. Uh, Mr. Fusion, Back to the Future reference. Yes, I, I'm aware. I took Mr. Fusion and decided to use Mr. Fusion and Mrs. Fusion as a, a type of technology. It just always seemed like it was a fun thing to do. Bender was a Futurama reference. Yes, I'm aware of that too. But uh, you've got to be careful about including things in these live streams because I, sometimes I just put them in. Um, electromancy, the ability to control electrical charges, right. Okay, I got it, Charles. I see it. I see it, and I'm planting it. Uh, electromancy, the ability to control electrical charges even inside other mechs, very dangerous. That feels like a, a movie reference as well. Uh, let's do that, and we want to do Bender, magic that shapes metal to your will. All right, as in water bending, and air bending, and earth bending, and air bending. Bender. I get it. <laughs> there are always lots of references in uh, some of the things that you guys do, which is quite quite entertaining because I do that all the time myself. Um, <laughs> it usually confuses people. Biological use magic bunch of annoyance for ah uh, right okay let's well we're going to grab your idea here Fred and we'll we'll take it and we'll plant it in, and I will share the document in a second because I have caught up, thankfully. Thankfully, I have caught up. <laughs> yeah. So, well done. Um, let me just share this with you. And I will type out our last and final task. Uh, in the short space of time that we have, we can hopefully get it done. Okay, so, what is our hashtag? What is... The government's governments in the world. What's the power structure government? Oh, I see. I don't know. What would what what would happen? Auto era. Okay, so it's a bunch, bunch, bunch. Much. Got it. Much is get is going in. Much is in. Okay. So government. Um let's let's put in some Let's put in some some wacky things. Let's put in a, a uh, so this would be a I, I don't want to say a it's not a dictatorship. It would be a Oh, what is this going to be? Direct democracy. Okay, so Charles, you've actually thrown in two different ideas. I was actually, what I might do is I might just go there. Machines like order, authoritarianism. Um, yeah, well, let's just take your ideas and port them straight over. Committee. All 
All right. Committee, and we'll grab Charles as well. Tectocracy. <laughs> yes, as in theocracy. I get what you're saying here. Yeah. Um, tech. Tech. Locracy. The worshippers of deities. Of, of technology based deities rule the nation. Let's put that. So we've got that one there. Cool. And um, I'm going to take. I'm going to just direct copy. I think those two that you've put in there. Because we are we are pretty close to out of time, and um, I'm gonna have to go to work, and it's my it'll be my my task today to do all of the things we normally do. Um, looking after the the site, it'll probably be my turn as always. Okay, authoritarianism. The machine likes order. Um, the machines like order. And one um, intelligence um, controls everything. Pretty scary, but we've got it. So we've got that one, and we'll pour it over the uh, last one here. Oh, actually, we've got a collective mind, the hive mind. I actually like the idea. It's kind of like the Borg, isn't it? Hive mind. Um, let's drop this in here as well. Direct democracy. Oh, how, how about direct democracy? Uh, and we would go something like, um, all the machines can vote instantly. All the machines, machines can vote instantly on all laws and decisions. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a a government governing body where you literally every decision that is made is made by the uh, collectively? That would be kind of amazing. Okay. Let's grab the hive mind. Comply or be recycled. Yeah, comply or be recycled. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> A collective hive hive mind. Um, so a collective government would be a race completely unified under one consciousness. Yep. Let's do that. That is, so this is different again. This is not like the authoritarianism where there's one central um, controlling intelligence. It's everybody is um, unified. Yeah. Slot machine government. <laughs> it's funny though. Thank you, Pale Rider. I'll put that in. It's going in. I am I'm including it. Got to be careful about putting stuff in this. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I think we are done. Let me just go back and show you what we have for today. Because we did we did a lot in a very short space of time. And uh, I feel like this is fairly unique. I'm going to have to do a little bit of work on it to get it to um, finished, but I will. Um, so we've got here our world names or world continents. We've got a bunch of different names here. Um, I might try to add in another one or two. We'll see how we go. We've got our different species or races. We've got a bunch of them. Uh, gremlins are, at this point seem to be the only biological one, although we do have cyborgs which are half biological, half machine. Then we have our gods, deities, um, goddesses, a bunch of them there. They're all filled out nicely. We've got 12. World creation stories. We've got seven creation stories. I will tidy these up so they're a little bit easy to understand. Uh, locations. We've got a bunch of locations, up to 10 so far. Monsters. We've got a bunch of different wacky monsters here. 
Uh, I might fill out this a little bit more a little bit later on. If I can get a chance, I will certainly give it a go. We have our magic. We've got seven technology. We've got 10 different bits of technology that can be sort of integrated into the game. And we don't. We can have this technology in different nations around the world. So we, we don't have to have just one type of technology. And then we've got government. Uh, and it was actually, there's, there's about five or six there. So that's actually pretty impressive. Like, that took us, what, an hour and a half to do it? Between all of us, we built the whole lot. Like, that's, that's a lot to get done in a short space of time. Um, and, of course, it's just the basics, but still more than enough to work with if you started off your own homebrew world and you wanted to run your own stuff you could do that i don't think it would be too hard i think it'd be actually fine so uh yeah nice job everybody well done well done i believe next week game master preparation is back to adventure building we are building adventures again next week same time same day what is tomorrow what are we doing tomorrow before i disappear well, as it happens, I finally, I think I've pretty much finished the Ogre Monster Lore. So this is Ogre Monster Lore from Mythology and very, various sources. I've had to compile quite a lot of stuff. I did my best, so that's going to be happening tomorrow, same time. Uh, that's tomorrow. Then the day after, we are either doing a Barbarian. I think we'll do a Barbarian or a Fighter, and we'll be building a character for Pathfinder 2nd Ed Edition with a... A character builder that looks like D&D Beyond and I'm doing it deliberately um, because uh, that's 11 weeks of character building for Pathfinder Second Ed Edition making it super simple for those of you who want to do that so uh, that's that's on my in my uh, wheelhouse that is coming this week that'll be not tomorrow but the day after then we'll be going back to Star Wars Saga and doing hopefully Starship Combat Starship Combat for Star Wars Saga, end of the week, we, we rebuild or fix the fighter for Dungeons and Dragons 5e, and possibly whatever version of D&D or game you are playing. We'll see how that works out. Should be an interesting week. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully you are too. Um, should be a lot of fun anyway. Uh, parts of all of this remind me of the, um, the Girl Genius comic. Do it. It's time to hack the planet. Yeah it's, yeah, it's time to hack the planet. Absolutely. Hack the planet. That's what we're doing now. <laughs> so this has gone down really well. Um, so thank you, everybody. You did really well today. So a big thank you to all of my patrons. Thank you to everybody who took part in the poll today. I do appreciate it. Thank you for doing so. I want to thank everybody who is just watching. If you were in the comments and helping feed this process and getting it done, I want to thank Charles Noroak. Um, I want to, Fred Hubber, uh, Pale Rider, um, Dungeons and Chronics. There's been been a lot of feedback from you guys. I, a big kid has been here too, um, and I'm sure there is more people that I have missed or forgotten. I think Ancient Dragon was in here at some point as well. Bunch of you. So even if you were just watching, it doesn't matter. Oh, Overboard, I forgot Overboard was here as well. Hey, thank you for all of your feedback and your interaction. Otherwise, this is just not as fun without uh, you being here and commenting. So big, huge thank you. But if you were just watching, thank you for being here. And hopefully next time you'll join in with us. No bad ideas, only ideas. Anyway, um, yeah, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, the wee wee early morning, look after yourself, your family and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours as long as they're not killer robots. If they're killer robots, then you can shoot them. But yeah, be nice to your neighbours. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.